welcome along uh, and for this episode what I thought we'd do is something a little bit different uh, I thought we'd do sort of a top five uh, hints and tips to help you get better at airbrushing so there's a few things especially for beginners uh, that I just want to run through just to sort of help you accept the way things are uh, and just increase the chances of getting a more successful painting uh, so I want to be looking at some of the basics and some of the things which we can often overlook especially with some of the newer techniques that everybody's using these days uh, there's some of the things which are so important uh, and that we need to keep involved with our techniques uh, and always keeping our arsenal to help us paint better uh, and have more success with when we're painting so i just want to have a look and here are our top five tips uh, for better airbrushing So tip number one, uh, we're going to break this down into two parts. Uh, the first one is tip dry. So tip dry is a big factor in airbrushing. Uh, it, in my experience, it doesn't matter what airbrush or what paint you're using. In general, some will tip dry more than others. Uh, but if you're using water-based acrylics, you still get it with solvent paints as well. It's just part of the game. So the first sort of part of it is accept that you're gonna get tip dry. And there's a couple of ways to, to help combat it. Um, we generally just use a, a cotton bud and we'll just wet the end of the cotton bud with a little bit of cleaner. And if we can just get in a little bit close, we we'll just let that sink into that end, give it a little bit of a turn and a spray off. And that will generally clean off any of the tip dry on the front. There's a couple of uh, telltales for tip dry. And one of them will be a slight little bit of whistling. Uh, and the other one will be a delay with the airbrush. So if you're working and you're just pulling that trigger back a little bit, you feel like you need to pull that trigger back a little bit further uh, for the paint to deliver. One of the things I would say is stop at that point, give the tip a clean, and you'll find the response from the airbrush is a lot quicker and a lot better. Uh, your lines will be a lot cleaner as well. Uh, but the, the first part is just accept that it's part of it. Again, in my experience, um, it, it just happens. Uh, there's no perfect combination. There's no perfect paint. Uh, you generally find what works for you. But another part would be just a normal sponge for cleaning uh, your, your dishes at home. Uh, again, a little bit of cleaner. Let that sink in. It's sponge. Give it a little turn and that will clean off as well. Um, so that will help clean the tip dry off. So the people tend to search a lot for the perfect combination. So you'll have the search, try so many different paints. Uh, but th they all generally will tip dry. Uh, so the, the first rule is accept it's going to happen. Uh, this is just part of the game and it'll help you just forget about it a little bit. It can be frustrating, uh, but it's just part of, the, part of the job. So the next part of that is let's have a look at what causes tip dry. So a lot of the things to help eliminate it is the first and foremost is you've probably heard it so many different times is keeping the air on. So when we're working, we're always keeping that air on. I know this can be difficult for some of us using smaller compressors because they get hot. Uh, that can start to create moisture. And if you start to get water coming through the airline, this is generally down to your compressor getting hot. As the, as the, the hot air comes through and cools down, you get condensation. Uh, and this is where the, the water comes through in, in the hose. So one of the things we want to do is keep the air on. If we start to, let's say, paint at this point and we lose the trigger at the end of the stroke, when I go back and press, you can just see that that little splats come out. Uh, if we lose that at the end and stop and we put the airbrush down, that little bit of paint that's sitting on that end is gonna to start to dry out. Uh, then obviously this is aiding to the tip dry that's coming. So we always keep the, the air on, paint on, paint off, paint on, paint off. Uh, this will help keep the front of the airbrush clean a little bit. It'll spray all the excess paint off and we shouldn't get this part where we lose that trigger. Then we go back to it. Let's do it up there. Press the paint for the air and we get that splat. So if you're noticing you're getting these splats over the over your painting, it's probably a lot to do with why you're loosening the, the air off at the end of the stroke. And this will be one of the biggest causes to sort of create a lot of tip dry. So tip number one, accept tip dry is part of the game. Give it a little bit of clean, either with a cotton bud or a sponge, just to get rid of any excess. Uh, just test on the panel and continue working. 
it's just what happens when airbrushing. So accept it and it'll help you move on uh, and start creating better artwork. Tip number two is about erasing. So erasing is a fantastic way of adding details, adding skin textures, adding this realistic aspect to your work. It can also help you fix problems. So if we get a little bit of flooding or we don't like a stroke, we can take a Scotch-Brite or we can take an eraser pencil or a little sharpened stick uh, to help get rid of some of those marks, which is a great way to sort of keep your motivation going throughout the, the painting, really. Uh, but what I, we don't want to overlook is the freehand aspect of airbrushing. A lot of people these days are fantastic with the eraser. They just never really put the work into learning to use the airbrush with, with freehand techniques. There's no replacement for it. Uh, so don't forget the importance of the freehand aspect. Uh, just if you've got five minutes or you, you know, you've finished a job and you just want to go paint something, just for you know once a week, uh, just sit and try and do a painting freehand. It doesn't need to be a masterpiece. It doesn't need to be a fully realistic thing. Uh, you just practice using in freehand you'll be surprised on how much this will help you create a more realistic painting uh, the, the freehand side of it gives us so much control gives us softer shadings gives us little details whereas sometimes the erasing or shielding uh, can be too sharp uh, it'll just give us the subtleties we need as you know the airbrush is such a soft tool uh, but we can create it just by using distance and using the control of the airbrush so this this tip here tip number two practice the freehand aspect of airbrushing So tip number three is working in light layers. So a lot of the time uh, people tend to try, if you've got to add a, a line, they'll try and add the line in one pass. Uh, this makes it quite heavy. There's a chance uh, that you'll get flooding. There's a chance you'll get sort of uneven sort of uh, patterns with the airbrush. So what we want you to do is think about light layering. So we're working it nice and light. We need to overlap and let those strokes and those lines build up. We can control how far we need to go. We can control how dark it is. And one of the, the best things about working this way is, if we realize we need to be darker, all we've got to do is add more paint. Uh, if we're already too dark at that point, there's not a lot we can do. So practice working in light layers. We want to be looking at probably three uh, to four passes to help build up some of the, the lines and the airbrush strokes in, in any painting, even dots when you're practicing dots, try and work at probably half trigger. So we're sort of just using if the, the sort of half thickness of it. And then if we need to be darker, we can just add more. What it also does is it allows the paint to dry in between. So at this point, if we're starting to, to flood up, the paint's wet. Uh, and it's more chance with the air, it's going to push it out like it is there. If we're lighter, we can control it that little bit more. Again, moving on from tip number one with the tip dry, keeping the air on at all times, letting that paint dry, it'll give us more control on building up some of the layers. So just to recap on this, work in light layers. So tip number four is start to use color more effectively. So a lot of the time, uh, we're probably generally, if you're looking for, at a painting and we're gonna add uh, a color to it, don't just automatically reach for the red that's on the shelf if that's what you need to use. Uh, start to have a look at manipulating it, start to darken it, start to desaturate it and start to understand color theory a little bit more. A lot of the time when things look realistic, if you're looking to add more realism to your work, uh, we need to start adding more realistic colours. So uh, we need to start to understand how it works, what the complementary colours do, and how to improve on that colour mixing side of things. The more realistic the colour, the more realistic the painting looks. Even if the technique uh, is not fantastic, even if your control, you know, you, in the early days of airbrushing, uh, if your control's almost there but not quite, it doesn't matter too much. If the colour is more realistic, uh, the painting will look more realistic. 
And one of the things that people do and suffer with a lot of the time is their use of colour. So they'll, they'll start the erasing, they'll start to have some of the uh, skin textures and they start to rub it out and creating great textures. And one of the things why they look wrong is because your colour is wrong. So we need to have a look uh, at increasing your knowledge around colour theory and start to mix the colours uh, to match your reference uh, and, and start to sort of create more natural looking paintings. So one of the things you can do to help is when you're trying to match a colour, isolate the area. Uh, you have an isolation window, uh, which you can sort of select one little piece of area. This eliminates pretty much all the contrast and all the other colours around it. This will make it easier for you to match. Uh, so you can always sort of just identify that one colour. And this is a, a direct comparison to what we need to match. So always spray out your colour that you've mixed uh, and compare it in your sort of isolated area. A lot of the time the, the paint, especially water-based, will either generally dry darker uh, when, they, when they dry. So in the pot when you've mixed it, if they look right in the pot, there's a chance they're going to dry darker, especially ones which uh, for skin tones and things like that, lighter tones of colours, they generally will dry darker. So spray them out, make sure they're dry, and then use them in your isolation window just to compare uh, against the, the existing colour uh, so we've got a better idea of what it is that we need to add to it to make the colour more uh, realistic and closer to the reference. So when learning to use colour, we always recommend using a colour wheel until you can sort of memorise and remember where the colours are. The spectrum of colours are always the same in a colour wheel, it never changes. Uh, they're always, red is always positioned opposite green, uh, violet is always positioned opposite yellow and orange is always positioned opposite blue. So depending on the colour line you're using, depends on where the orange is. Uh, and depends on where the blue is. This was from the airbrush series line, so this was balanced out for that paint line. But the colours uh, are, are all the same, So, but my red I found was there. Your red may be here, so the opposite may be more of a yellow or green uh, for your line. It just depends on the line of paint you use. So what we'd always recommend is for you to whatever paint line you use, stick to that paint line. Don't mix and match with different colours. Uh, always try and stick to the one paint line because you learn the line. You learn that that particular red works with that particular green. So to desaturate a colour, you can see this arrow here that points outwards saying saturation. This is the brightest colour around the wheel. This is normally where they are pure in the bottle. So your pure red at the bottle will probably be right on the edge. Sometimes in realism, we need to bring it down to around about the sort of the middle band. So we've took that power away from the colour. So the way to do that is by using the complementary colour or the opposite colour. So if I want to desaturate that red a little bit, so we've just got a more natural tone, I'll reach for the red, start with the red and add the opposite colour, which in this case is green. Exactly the same uh, with violet and yellow. If I need that sort of slighter, paler or more greyed off colour, I will add violet. This one for me was always a crazy thought to think if I want to desaturate a yellow and make it that little bit less bright, this little less powerful, uh, I would add violet. You'd be surprised on what it does. Uh, often, sometimes you can just use complementary colours just to um, just to match a colour perfectly without the use of adding any white or black. So a lot of the time when I want to darken a colour, I'll never just use black. I will use the theory involved in creating the colour. So it's exactly the same with orange, lit slightly less sort of uh, powerful orange. I'm going to add blue. And it just works throughout the wheel. It's just making sure that your colours balance uh, and work well. So test if you've got a couple of different reds. Test which one works better with green. And the way you can do that is just by adding a little bit of white in a pot and adding uh, the two colours and hopefully we should get grey in the middle. If you're getting brown or more over this side of the, of the wheel, obviously these two colours are not balanced. So if your red is more of a magenta red and your green is more of a blue green, you're going to end up in the middle somewhere here. Uh, and our vice versa, if it's over that way, you're going to end up with more of a brown. What we want to be looking at is when we add the two colours together, we should be getting a grey in the middle. This will help us sort of uh, get perfect colour matching when we're mixing uh, colours together to get, to get a match. 
And finally, tip number five, uh, finish your paintings. So even if you make a mistake halfway through, there's parts of it you don't like. Maybe I've made a mistake with some of the hair, uh, the eyes were slightly off. Remember, every painting doesn't need to be a masterpiece. Uh, so we can just, just complete the paintings. We never experience the end goal or the end result. Often, a lot of the time when we stand back and look at it, it's not as bad as we first thought. So finish the painting, continue on, uh, leave the mistake, it doesn't matter. Uh, just carry on and finish that painting. We've got something else to look at, something else to learn from, and, and just remind us all the time that what happened that, that time when we made that mistake. Why did it happen? It wasn't the paint, it wasn't the airbrush. We did something wrong. Uh, a lot of the time for me to sort of get better and the way I progressed with airbrushing, I always looked at the source, which was me. If I'm controlling the airbrush, I'd mix the paint. So a lot of the time, instead of blaming the airbrush and blaming the paint, I always blame myself. So I looked at it and just continued on and finished the painting. Uh, a lot of the time, like I said, it, it's never as bad as you think, but we need to always experience that end goal. If we never get to the point where we're having final contrast, uh, we never experience how it feels and how it changes the painting. If we sort of never add it in the background, we never see the end result as much as, as, as we could. So the last and final tip is to always finish the painting. Uh, I know from past experience and from my experience, uh, a lot of the time you get halfway through, you don't like the feel of it, you don't like how it looks. Uh, just keep it to the side and then maybe it could be a few weeks later uh, that you might feel like you want to finish it off. Uh, most of the ones in my early days ended up in the bin. Uh, I'd just paint over them, sand them off, wash them off, uh, and I'd just come back to it again uh, and try again later on. Uh, but I, I found that it, the more I continued on and the more I finished the painting, uh, the better that I, I sort of progressed with things. Um, so finish the paintings. So there is our top five tips for better airbrushing. Uh, I hope some of them are quite simple, uh, but it's just helping you understand it a little bit more. The, the, the things such as tip dry and keeping the air on, really it, it's things you should be doing anyway, but a lot of people get really frustrated with it uh, and they, they sort of uh, start to drift away from some of uh, the, the paints that they're using and start to mix and match. Uh, and in my experience, all this does is it adds to the frustration. Uh, so I hope this was informative for you. We have got some exciting news coming up for this year. Uh, hopefully by the end of the summer, we'll have our brand new airbrush shell coming out, uh, which is called Inside Airbrush. It's gonna be exclusive to our site, learntoairbrush.bhx.tv. Uh, and for UK wise, it's gonna be a tour around the country. We're gonna be talking to uh, majority of the professional artists in the industry and giving you an insight on what it's like uh, to be a professional artist, for, to do it every day. Uh, we're gonna be asking them questions, uh, giving you advice on uh, sort of how maybe you can do it as well. Uh, and of course, with everything else that a magazine does, product reviews, uh, and just honest advice about some of the stuff we can buy. These days, the market is flooded uh, with a lot of crap, uh, but it's also got some little hidden gems, uh, and hopefully we'll be bringing those to you too. Uh, so being that said, uh, hopefully and we'll see you on our next video.